UFC 158, it is coming up Saturday night, part of the main card. We are going to be seeing this man, Nate Marquardt, returning to the UFC. And uh, how does that feel, Nate? Uh, a bit of a homecoming here for you of sorts. Oh, yeah, it feels great, man. I'm excited. Now, we, we saw a bunch of changes here with uh, Roy McDonald's uh, neck injury, and thus you find yourself onto this card. And you were someone that you were very active, yet you know you wanted this fight mm -hmm. uh, with Jake Ellenberger. You got it. Um, how quickly after going online and maybe through your management did you find out that you'd be getting this fight? Uh, basically, it was like later that night, I sent out a tweet that, that I wanted to fight Ellenberger and, and uh, that night Joe Silva called me up, I was sleeping, and he <laughs> said, you got the fight, so. The power of Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, in action, and uh, we, we get this great fight out of it. This is, uh, to me, just a great situation for yourself here. We see these top three welterweight bouts, and it's, Dana White's called it, you know, an unofficial tournament here where, you know, you put in a strong performance here, you're instantly in the mix here. It seems like a great opportunity for you coming up Saturday. Oh, yeah, I'm excited, man. And, and Ellenberger's a tough opponent. You know, he's very exciting, and I think we're going to have a great matchup. You know, I think our styles are going to match real well. It's going to be a good fight for the fans. Yeah, from what you've watched uh, of Jake, was there something about his style that you felt when this when this vacancy came up that it was like, you know, this is this is a great fight for me? What was it about his style maybe that uh, lent itself towards uh, towards yours? Well, you know, I, I, I feel like I can match up well against anybody just because I'm, you know, well-rounded. But but with Jake, he, you know, he, he definitely comes out to fight. And I think, uh, you know, I think I do best uh, when, when I fight guys who are coming to fight and not just to necessarily win a decision. You know, he comes out to fight. He tries to finish fights. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to make it exciting. And, and we're both going to leave openings for, for the other guy, you know. So I think it's going to make a good fight. Now, some people were surprised at the fact that you were just came back into the cage so quickly after the Tarek Safadine loss. Uh, did you go back and watch that fight? And, and how, uh, how was your leg heal healed uh, after that? Because I believe you, you said somewhere online that, you know, it wasn't uh, a giant rehabilitation period. Your leg was uh, pretty much okay after that fight. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it, it, I went immediately into rehab after the fight. Uh, so just basically, to, you know, as a precaution to make sure there weren't any uh, – there wasn't any permanent damage um, because with a bruising like that, you can get um, weird things called HO uh, ossification, basically where the bone growth inside the muscle. And uh, so I made sure, you know, that didn't happen. So I didn't have any permanent sure. damage. And, and uh, it also just got me back in the gym sooner and, and, you know, made it so I was able to take the fight. How quickly were you back uh, in the gym after that fight? Well, uh, you know, you know, I gradually went into the gym, so I, I really hadn't done any actual sparring uh, until I got this fight. So oh. <laughs> my first day back sparring, but, you know, I had done technical work and, and, and stuff like that. So and roughly like how much of a camp were you able to put together here? Because this was, you know, kind of late notice here that the fact that you would be part of this card. Yeah, basically I had three weeks. And what, do you, what are you doing like three weeks? I mean, there, there's obviously, you know, you don't get the benefit of a full camp. You kind of like, how, how do you put together uh, a camp for, you know, 21 days here for a fight, the key aspects that you kind of narrow in on? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it was uh, stressful at first because uh, me and my coaches basically just had to scramble and try to come up with a game plan, uh, come up with a game plan as far as how the camp was going to go. And then obviously, too, a, a, an actual game plan for the fight. Um, so... That first week, you know, I was back in the gym, back at it 100%. The, so the, the first week was real rough because, yeah. uh, you know, I was getting back in shape and, and uh, you know, just from, from not sparring and stuff like that. Um, but uh, after the, the, the first week, we had four guys from out of town uh, come in. I had um, uh, Stevie Wonderboy Thompson, oh, yeah. uh, Derek Brunson. Uh, I had uh, Elliot Ellis and uh, Mike King. All, all four of them would come in for basically two weeks and uh, help me train for this fight. And uh, those guys definitely really helped push me, and, as well as the guys I have in Denver. You know, we, we have a lot of wrestlers and, and uh, good boxers and kickboxers and, and MMA guys. So, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a scramble, and, and, but sure. I, th I feel like we did a, good, a really good job, and, and I feel 100% ready. And now I've got to ask, you were also part of uh, the memorable conference call last week uh, involving George St. Pierre and Nick Diaz. Uh, what was it? Just tell us, uh, being on the line here yourself, ju just listening to these go back and forth. I mean, you kind of had a, a front row seat, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was uh, pretty funny. Uh, uh, Nick Diaz is a character, you know, and uh, I've never really spoken to him and uh, just hearing him talk. It was interesting. And then 
And then once they started going at it, I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm not, I'm basically not needed on this call. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, you know, that was, that was cool, actually. <laughs> at least they t kept you entertained there on the oh, line, yeah, I think. So. Yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. Uh, I, I like listening to Diaz because uh, you definitely have to really pay attention to try to figure out what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, the transcripts after have come in very handy yeah. for you. Who do you like in that fight? Oh, of course, George. You know, he's a he's, uh, training partner and, and friend. And uh, uh, just objectively, you know, I would pick George. Um, although, D you know, Diaz, I think he's a very tough, skilled fighter. Uh, I think stylistically he's going to have a hard time with, with George. I think a lot of the guys that he beats, he's able to wear them out and, and <coughs> overwhelm them with his high output of punches. And, um, you know, he's just constantly fighting. But I think George is going to be a little uh, too savvy for that style. He's going to be able to take him down, uh, slow him down, and, and you know, put, put hands on him. Well, we are looking forward to your return to the UFC. It is this Saturday night, pay-per-view main card, 10 Eastern, Nate Marquardt, Jake Ellenberger in a very intriguing welterweight bout.